सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओ शातिशाशाति Bhagavad Gita in daily life This is what we started discussing last night We said that in daily life we are required to play a variety of roles different roles in different situations <coughs> Lord Krishna says niyatam kuru karmatvam tvam niyatam karma karu may you perform the karma or action as appointed as it is proper <coughs> yesterday we pointed out as to how everything in the creation performs its niyata karma everything in creation does what it is appointed to do the sun is appointed to shine it does so is the moon earth is appointed to its job and also revolve around the sun beginning from every atom all the way up to the big galaxies everything in the nature performs appointed task everything is appointed to do as though and nobody takes any liberty with it meaning that no element of nature takes any liberty with what it is appointed to every everything very sincerely and committedly does what it is required to do so also the animal kingdom the plant kingdom all the living beings other than human beings all of them are programmed to do what is proper thing to do meaning a cow always acts as a proper cow a buffalo acts as a proper buffalo and so on and so forth thus every creature other than human being acts in a manner which is proper or appropriate for them that's the reason why we can predict their behavior while you are driving on the road let's say in india you can predict how a cow will behave when you come across or confront a cow on the road you can generally predict how a cow will behave you come across in india there are cows and dogs and sometimes you find even the peacocks crossing the road all kinds of things that is this is called democracy in democracy everybody has equal room everybody has the freedom and they have everything and everybody considers its freedom to be to use the road and they have indian drivers are quite a challenge but as i said we can generally predict how the creatures other than human being will behave and accordingly we can conduct our vehicle <coughs> however when it comes to a human being we cannot say what this person will do is crossing the road he may cross straight he may go back he may stop he may do anything because human being is not programmed there is a free will and therefore there is a freedom to decide what to do what not to do because the freedom is given therefore it is possible that a human being can abuse that freedom there is called freedom which can be abused otherwise not a freedom thus in case of human being it is possible that he may abuse the freedom that is given to him what is meant by abusing that 
he may not do what is proper for him to do. He has the freedom to do improper things or things that are not, that is not becoming of him. Something becoming of you. A behavior of a father becoming to a father. Behavior of a son becoming to a son. <coughs> As I said, we look at Ramayana and we see how Lord Rama conducts as a son. What is becoming of a son? What is becoming of a husband? What is becoming of a wife? Etc. But what is meant by freedom is that you may abuse that freedom and conduct yourself in an unbecoming manner. This is possible. For whom? For a human being. Because a human being is not completely programmed. We are also programmed to some extent, to a large extent. We are also programmed, but not completely programmed. We don't have a lot of freedom, understand? We have some freedom. This body is given to me, no freedom. My eyes, ears, they are given to me, no freedom. The parents, I'm born to a certain parentage, no freedom. Our siblings, no freedom, etc., etc. So that way, we may not have too much freedom. But still, we do have freedom to decide how to act. It is possible that, as human beings, we may abuse this freedom. And act in a manner which is not becoming of ourselves. So what happens? Suppose we abuse the freedom, what happens? We get abused. That's a problem. As you sow, so you reap. This is a basic law of karma. It's a law of cause and effect. As you sow, so you reap. Therefore, if we perform an action that is not becoming of us, then we will also get a result that is harmful to us. On the other hand, if we act in a manner which is becoming of us, we will get a result which is helpful to us. Thus, it is for us to use our free will with wisdom so that our actions are a means of helping us, not hurting us. What is meant by helping? Helping means helping us becoming happy, helping us becoming free. That is what we want in our life. We want happiness. We want freedom. Nobody likes bondage. Nobody likes dependence. Everybody likes freedom. Nobody wants unhappiness. Everybody wants happiness. I said yesterday, a natural love for happiness. A natural attachment for happiness. A natural aversion for unhappiness. So you want to be happy. You want to be free. How to be happy? How to be free? We have our own notion of how to be happy. We think that by becoming a wealthy person, I'll be happy. By becoming a person of power or authority, I'll be happy. By being a famous person, I'll be happy. So usually we have concluded that acquiring wealth, name, fame, power, recognition, all of this will bring happiness for us. Unfortunately, that is not true. Meaning that they can give us what they can give us. Wealth can give us what wealth can give us. It can give us comfort, it can give us some power, but not happiness. Meaning that this means, the worldly means, are not designed to give us happiness or freedom. In fact, if anything, they make us more bound than free. How you know? It is said that comfort comes as a guest, lingers on to become host, stays on to enslave us. 
So comfort, luxury, all of these things come as a guest. And therefore, we are very happy it looks. Slowly, they stay on to become host. And further, they stay on, linger on to become host and stay on to enslave us. So, if you observe our life, we simply depend upon these material things. Then, what is happening is, we are becoming more and more dependent upon things. As it is well said, and was Swami very fond of quoting this, what is called progress? Progress is converting luxuries into necessities. What is for me a luxury becomes in course of time a necessity. What is luxury? You can afford to have it, you can afford not to have it. What is necessity? You must have it because you are dependent upon that. Thus, if you are not wise, there is a wise way of relating to the worldly achievements. They are good, provided we relate to them in a wise way. We know that we should, they are the means and not the end. We know that we should become their masters and not allow them to become our masters. If that is there, all the achievements are a great asset. For a wise person, for a mature person, all achievements are great assets. So Vedanta does not say, don't achieve things in life. Vedanta says that you relate to them in a mature way, in a wise way. What is the wise way of relating to them? Understanding their nature. That they have a usefulness in our life. They can be very helpful to us, useful to us. But they cannot be a source of happiness or security or freedom because they are not designed to give us that. This happiness or security or freedom we have to discover from our own self. Therefore, you can say that there are two kinds of problems in our life. One is a set of problems centered on matter. Your hunger, your thirst, cold, heat, etc. So we have needs. And the all worldly accomplishments can fulfill those needs. But we have other need and that is the need of happiness or freedom. And that is a need centered upon the self. Understand, two kinds of needs are there. One is a need centered upon non-self. Other is a need centered upon the self. What is non-self? All the worldly things are non-self. And we need them because we have those kind of needs. The society needs education. There are problems of illiteracy. There are problems of poverty. There are problems of disease. There are many problems. Hunger, thirst, many problems are there. For solving those problems, we need all the worldly means. No doubt about that. If you are hungry, meditation is not the answer. Food is the answer. If you are thirsty, japa is not the answer. Water is the answer. The, the Vedanta is very clear. But if you want to be happy, then you should know what is the answer. You are the answer. The answer for happiness is to be found from within ourselves and not outside of ourselves. Therefore, what is meant by using our free will wisely? Is that use of our free will should become a means of making us happier than what we are if you do not use it wisely, that very free will can become a source of unhappiness or misery. That is a peculiar situation with a human being. As I say, 
For other creatures, they have no free will. Therefore, they cannot misuse it. They cannot be happier. They cannot be unhappier. They are what they are. We can be happy or we can be miserable. Understand that this sadness, this depression is a typical problem of a human being. In India, we never see, you know there are street dogs. You never see a depressed street dog. Have you ever seen? A street dog sitting in a corner with a long face. No. You don't see a buffalo being sad. This sadness, depression is a typical problem of human being. Somebody told me, Swamiji, my dog gets depressed. I said, how long has a dog remained with you? It is possible that we can pass on our problems to our pets. It is possible. But as they are designed, they don't have this problem of sadness. They don't have a problem of insult. They don't have a problem of hurt. They don't have a problem of guilt. They don't have that. You have all these problems, hurt and guilt and sadness, all these other problems are there. Meaning that if we use our free will improperly, unwisely, that very free will, the misuse of free will will become the cause of sadness, hurt, guilt, unhappiness, depression. So understand that all unhappiness that we have can be traced to misuse or abuse of our free will. And all happiness can be traced to the proper or wise use of the free will. You understand? This is very important to understand. And therefore, Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to wisely use our free will. Lord Krishna says, Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam. What is Niyatam? Niyatam is, may you do that for which you are appointed to do. As we pointed out, all the elements in nature are programmed to do what they are appointed to do. All the creatures other than human beings also are program to do what they are appointed to do. Therefore, they are always in harmony with nature. They never, they do not abuse or they do not disturb what we call the ecological balance. All problems of ecological balance, imbalance, what you call global warming, the greenhouse gases, the, what do you call it, the ozone layer, you know, opening of the ozone layer, all of these are created by who? By human being. All of this shows abuse of free will. Because of a certain system of philosophy, The Western philosophy says that, Bible says that this world is meant for your use. The animals are meant for your being food, etc, etc. They don't have soul. So therefore, the West always thought that nature is meant to be exploited. In East, in India, we always respected nature. We worshipped nature. For us, it was Mother Nature. Never we revered it, respected it. Here, the nature is to be conquered. You have to, ex you know, to, you to extract the maximum from that. Of course, that enabled them to make great advances in material sciences so that they could conquer the mighty forces of nature. How to conquer the wind? How to conquer the water? How to produce power? How to use all the natural forces to our advantage. Great. 
But if you do not observe boundaries, then you can abuse that. So, by abuse of free will, human being can create a lot of problems for himself as well as for the world. The atom can be used for peaceful purposes, atomic energy. Or it can be used for destruction. So there are good human beings. You are not saying, oh, there are good human beings. And they have used all these things for peaceful purposes, as a blessing to the mankind. But there are some also who abused it and they become a curse to the mankind. Meaning that a human being can become a blessing to himself and to the world or he can become a curse to himself or to the world. Niyatam kuru karmatam. Therefore, Arjuna, may you perform your action as appropriate for you, as becoming of you, as it is in keeping with your dignity. But how do I know, Swamiji? What is the proper action? So yesterday, you pointed out how there exists a universal order. <clears throat> how we are all born with an awareness or consciousness of how we like to be treated by others. What others should not do to me, I'm very clear about that. And what others should do to me, I'm very clear about that. So I want others to be kind to me, not cruel to me. I want others to be generous to me, not greedy. I want others to be truthful to me, honest to me, not dishonest. I am very clear and each one of us is in agreement to this. Therefore, that forms a universal norm for interacting with each other because I know what I expect from you and you and I know what you expect from me. That's another thing. If I only knew what I expect from you and did not know what you expect from me, then the life would have been different. I know that you should not hurt me. So I did not know that you expect me to not to hurt you. Then I wind up hurting without feeling bad about it. But here I know that just as I do not want to be hurt by you, you also do not want to be hurt by me. So what happens, you know, when I deliberately hurt you, what happens to me? There is a sense of guilt. We feel guilty whenever we deliberately do something that goes against his norm, correct? Therefore, this norm, this universal awareness with which we are born, thank God that each one of us is born with awareness of not only what we expect from others, but also the awareness of what others expect from me. And that decides what is right and what is not right. Simple. Do not do unto others what you do not want them to do to you. And reach out to others the way you want them to reach out to you. Very simple. Upon this is based the value called ahimsa or non-violence. Of all the values that we are taught, the most primary value is ahimsa or non-violence which is based on this universal consciousness. I want to be happy, I want to live and live happily. I know that my neighbor also wants to live and live happily. I do not want others to come in my way of my pursuit of happiness and freedom. I do not want others to come in my way of my pursuit of happiness and freedom. And I know that others also do not want me to come in their way of their pursuit of happiness and freedom. I do not want others to trample upon my rights. I want the freedom 
to pursue my rights. I know that others also want their freedom. They do not want me to trample upon their freedom, their rights. We know this. And therefore, this act with awareness of this. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Atma upamena sarvatra samam pasyati yorjuna sukham vaya divadukham sayogi paramo mataha. Verse in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. When Lord Krishna describes a yogi, sayogi paramo mataha. Saha paramo yogi mataha. Lord Krishna says that, in my opinion, this person is a supreme yogi. So we think that a yogi is the one who is always in samadhi. That is our picture of a yogi. That may be so. But Lord Krishna says, even you and I, even ordinary people who are worldly people, samsaris, who are living family life, day to day living, this person also can be a supreme yogi by observing this very simple rule. Sukham Vaya Lord Krishna says, Atma Pamyana. Treat others as you treat yourself. Treat others as you treat yourself. How do I treat myself? I always want to make myself happy. I never want to make myself unhappy, correct? That's all. Make others also happy. Do not make them unhappy. Sounds very simple, isn't it? That's all. I don't want others to lie. Therefore, I should not lie. I do not want others to cheat. I should not cheat. I do not want others to hurt. I should not hurt. But unfortunately, we find ourselves, as I said yesterday, sometimes telling lies. In simple things, you say, what is your salary? What is your age? What is this? In simple things, we find ourselves sometimes telling lies, sometimes insulting people, sometimes hurting them. Meaning that we find very often ourselves violating these values. So simple rule about the life. Following this value is a way to become happy. And violating the value is a way to become unhappy. So happiness and unhappiness has nothing to do whatever that is around me, understand? Happiness is a state of mind, unhappiness is a state of mind. And it is I who is to create that state of mind. That happiness called state of mind does not get created by itself. You cannot decide to be happy. Swami, you say that I should be happy. I will decide that I will be happy. Decide to be happy. Otherwise nobody will be unhappy. Happiness has to happen. Understand? Just as you cannot decide to love somebody. I can say I love you. That's one thing. This is a very common thing. Love you. Whenever they uh, conclude their conversation on the telephone, love you, love you. Or this one says, that one also. It's very good, nice thing. We like to hear that. But love does not happen simply by saying, I love you. Love does not happen by my will. You cannot will the love. Love has to happen. Certainly I can will. I can will what to talk. I can will. Action I can will. What to do, what not to do. Love has to happen. Correct? Otherwise, there will be only love everywhere. 
नो बडी वुड सेपरेट फ्रेंड्स सेपरेट पार्टनर्स सेपरेट स्पाउज इज सेपरेट पीपल सेपरेट फॉर वॉन्ट ऑफ लव इफ लव कुड बी विल्ड मीनिंग दैट इफ इट वॉज पॉसिबल वॉर अस टू कमेंड लव वेर आई लव यू एंड लव हैपन्स दे वुड बी नो प्रॉब्लम इन लाइफ बट नो आई कैनॉट विल लव लव हैज टू हैपन लाइक स्लीप एट नाइट I cannot will sleep. Sleep has to happen. Similarly, I cannot will happiness. Happiness has to happen. Then what can I do, Swami, to be happy? What can I do to love? Love has to happen. What can I do? You know, I can create conditions which are conducive for the love to happen. <coughs> there is in the beginning when they meet each other and still in the beginning you don't know each other so what do you do you bring gift to this person you write a nice letter you make for what are people do for what they do so that love can happen similarly happiness has to happen what can we do we can do something to create condition for the happiness to happen what can we do we can niyatam kuru karmatvam we can do what is right and avoid what is wrong and you know what is right what i want from others is what others want from me so that is right what i do not want from others is what they do not want from me so that is wrong avoid do what is right avoid what is wrong what comes in my way why i know who doesn't know this who does not know that honesty is a value who doesn't know who does not know the truthfulness is a value everybody knows who does not know non violence is not a value everybody knows meaning that these are all common sense values mostly known to us and still we find ourselves very often not being able to follow or practice these values why we talked about it yesterday night why because of likes and dislikes attachments and aversion these are called impulses we have these impulses in our mind of attachment and aversion likes and dislikes what is an attachment what's a like that i want to have things only this way and not other way what is dislike i do not want it this way thus as i said yesterday we have prescription for everything and everybody as to what they should be and what they should not be these attachments and aversions they force me they pressurize me so even though i know what is right there is something within me that pressurizes me to do what is wrong you may have heard this statement which is attributed to duryodhana have you heard this duryodhana says janami dharmam na ca me pravrutti janami adharmam नचमे निवृत्ति दुर्योधन इज से टू हैव सेट यू डोंट फाइंड दिस महाभारत बट दिस इज दैट दिस श्लोका इज दैर इन द सो कॉल पांडव गीता यू नो दिस श्लोका इज दैर दुर्योधन से जाना मे धर्म आई नो वट इज राइट आई नो वट इज राइट यस आई नो वट इज धर्म बिकॉज दुर्योधन ऑल्सो इज वेल एजुकेटेड पर्सन प्रवृत्ति बट देन आई कैनॉट फॉलो इट आई कैनॉट माइक मेक माई सेल्फ फॉलो धर्म जाना मी अधर्म आई नो वट इज अधर्म आई नो वट इज अन राइचियसनेस न च मे निवृत्ति बट आई कैनॉट अवॉइड इट हाउ कम हे दुर्योधन यू आर वेल एजुकेटेड यू आर अ ग्रोन अ पर्सन 
He says, I'm helpless. Kena api devena, rudisthitena, yatha niyuktosmi, tatha karomi. Kena api devena, rudisthitena, there is some devata, somebody sitting in my heart. Yatha niyuktosmi, tatha karomi, as it compels me, that is what I do. Duryodhana says that I have no free will. I am compelled by something sitting in my own heart. I am compelled by my own impulses. Compelled by greed, compelled by anger, compelled by lust, compelled by jealousy, compelled by uh, all these negative impulses. What they do compel me, that's what I do. This is a problem with human beings. Even Arjuna also asks of Lord Krishna in the third chapter. Atha kena prayuktoyam papam charati purushaha anichinda vivashneya baladiva niyojitaha. Arjuna asks of Lord Krishna, what is it within a person which compels him to go against his own value? Even though it doesn't, somebody compels me. Is something compelling me? What is that? Lord Krishna says, Kamesha, Krodesha, Rajoguna, Samudbhava. Here, Arjuna, that is Kama, which becomes Krodha. Kama means a strong desire, call it attachment, or strong desire, or craving. And therefore, that because of that craving, that expectation, that demand, this morning we talked about it. When well, talking about stress management, we talked about this. Then we, each one of us has demands within ourselves. Meaning that we make demands upon others as to how they should be, how they should conduct, how they should treat me. It's called karma, a strong demand. A simple desire is okay. If you desire, If it is fulfilled, okay. Not fulfilled, okay. Meaning if non-fulfilled would have desired, you can deal with it, no problem. But the desire, the fulfillment of which is very important to me. Meaning that when my desire is not fulfilled, I get upset. I get angry. Now that is called a binding desire. So karma means a binding desire. I call it attachment, call it binding desire. Call it Kama, call it Raga. And when that is not satisfied, it results into Krodha or Dvesha. Raga and Dvesha. Kama and Krodha. So Lord Krishna identifies this. Kamesha, Krodesha, Rajoguna, Smudbhava, Mahashano, Mahapapma. Here Arjuna. This fellow is a glutton. You know what is a glutton? He keeps on eating. His hunger is never satisfied. Mahapapma is a great sinner. Vidhyanamihvairanam. Know this to be your number one enemy. <clears throat> so Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita identifies an inner enemy. So Bhagavad Gita is a teaching of how to conquer this inner enemy. Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, Hey, before you fight with your external enemies, you first conquer this inner enemy and then fight with external enemies. And Lord Krishna says in the Gita also, Atmaiva Hyatmanobandhu, Atmaiva Ripu Atmanahan. Here, Arjuna, your, your mind can be your friend or benefactor. Your own mind can be your enemy. Meaning that we do not have to go out in the world in search of enemies. Our mind is quite capable of becoming our own enemy. At the same time, then we have to make an effort to make our mind our friend. Which mind is enemy? Which mind is friend? Bandhuratma atmanasya 
येनात्मैवात्मनाचित अनात्मनस्तु शत्रुत्व वर्धेतात्मैव शत्रुवत लॉर्ड कृष्णा से इज अ माइंड दैट इज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ काम एंड क्रोध ऑफ राग एंड द्वेष ऑफ अटैचमेंट एंड एवर्जन ऑफ क्रेविंग एंड एंगर एंड ग्रीन दैट माइंड इज अवर एनिमी मीनिंग दैट दैट माइंड कॉन्स्टेंटली हर्ट्स मी डैमेज मी ऑन द अदर हैंड द माइंड दैट इज फ्री फ्रॉम काम एंड क्रोध फ्री फ्रॉम राग द्वेष फ्री फ्रॉम अटैचमेंट एवर्जन that mind becomes my friend that becomes my benefactor that becomes the means of happiness so happiness does not happen happiness has to be manifest this is not understood we think that by fulfilling our desire we'll be happy but there is no such rule but swami i do feel happy i am watching movie i do feel happy i am eating ice cream i do feel happy with my friend i do feel happy yes you know the happiness comes when that is the result of your past punya karma you know punya karma past virtuous deeds and we are using we have some kind of savings in us what's a saving punya karma it is not somebody gives gives me happiness understand it is my punya karma that gives me happiness if there is not there that same somebody can become source of unhappiness also see if some person can give me happiness then all the time that person should give me happiness all circumstances is there such a person no is there such a time is there such a thing that can give me all the time happiness no but what is it it is my punya karma as long as it is there okay but otherwise happiness does not come from outside happiness comes from within our own self so what is our project what does bhagavad gita teach how to conquer raga and dvesha attachment and aversion kama and krodha so what is lord krishna's prescription श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुण परधर्मात्वनुष्ठिता स्वधर्मे निधन श्रेय परधर्मो भयाव श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुण लॉर्ड कृष्णा से इज एट फॉलोइंग वंस ओन धर्म इज ऑलवेज बेटर परधर्मो भयाव समी एस धर्म may look attractive but it is fraught with danger swadharme nidanam shreyah following one's dharma even if you if you do die following your dharma it is better para dharma bhayavah but dharma of somebody else is fraught with fear this dharma is again a problem you know what is swami lord what does lord krishna mean by dharma he means vaishnava dharma स्वामी नारायण धर्म हिंदू धर्म जैन धर्म वॉट इज ए मीन स्वधर्म नो स्वधर्म इज वॉट इज प्रॉपर फॉर मी टू डू इन ए गिवन सिचुएशन मीनिंग स्वधर्म मीन्स फॉलोइंग दिस वैल्यूज बेस्ड अपॉन दिस कॉमन अवेयरनेस वॉट आई शुड नॉट डोंट डू अदर्स वॉट आई डो नॉट वॉन्ट दम टू डू टू मी एंड आई शुड रीच आउट टू अदर्स the way i want them to reach out that is called swadharma so what is paradharma paradharma is compromising this value so he says shayan swadharma viguna paradharma sanushya what happens sometimes it is very convenient sometimes telling a little lie seems to be very profitable sometimes compromising values appears to be very profitable like once when i was passing through a customs in bombay many years ago i was carrying two huge suitcases filled with variety of electronic gadgets 
there was a lot of attraction those days of importing electronic things from a foreign country such as US but they are not available in India in the late 80s etc 90s so I was carrying them I was not carrying people gifted me and there were my bags are full of all kinds of tape recorders and all sorts of things for which one is required to pay duty now when I pass through customs the customs officer asked me Swamiji do you have something to declare? Do you have any dutyable goods to declare? Swadharma and Paradharma. What is Swadharma? Swadharma is following what is right. What is right? To be honest. And telling yes, I have this thing to declare. But I know that once I said yes, he will open my bags, he will go through every corner of it and find out every little thing, and make a long list. And not only he will charge duty, he will charge penalty. 100% duty, 125% penalty. All of that would add up to thousands and thousands of rupees. Maybe 50,000 rupees, 75,000. I did, you know, that would be, that's a lot of money. So, Paradharma, so, Paradharma is what? Telling a lie. Swadharma is being honest. Paradharma being dishonest. Paradharma means other dharma, being opposite dharma. Now, opposite dharma being dishonest seems very attractive. What is the attraction there? What's the gain? I save a lot of money. Lord Krishna says, Swadharma nidhanam shreya It is better to die. We don't have to die. Bad will suffer following one's own dharma. So thus, we are subjected to this kind of critical test very often. At that time, what is my dharma? I will not tell you what I did, but what is my dharma? <laughs> my dharma is to be honest. Swadharma and paradharma. Now, if you are alert, if you are observant, we find that every minute we are challenged. It depends upon how, how much committed we are to what is right. Because once we start being honest or truthful, we discover many dimensions of truthfulness. Mahatma Gandhi had his value of non-violence. I just started practicing this. He started thinking more and more about it. He discovered new and new dimensions of what non-violence is. That he realized that. In fact, whenever I'm consuming or using more than what is my right, I am depriving somebody of their right. You follow? Upanishad says that God has created the food for all creatures, not only for human beings. So when we grow food in our fields, not only human beings, but all living beings have their share. So Upanishad says that when I am eating food, one morsel of food when I am putting in my mouth, the whole world is watching, he is taking our food. Meaning that if I waste any food, you know, that becomes violence because I'm depriving somebody of what they could have. Not only waste, Swamiji, one more Puran Pali. My general quota is half Puran Pali. Oh, one. Swamiji is very good. Take one more. Take one more. I also love that. So I take instead of one, take two, take three. Now, we do not realize that this is violence. Because I am consuming what is more than what I require. And that way, I am hurting my body. At the same time, I am depriving somebody of what they should have. 
Recently, I was watching somebody showed me a movie called Butler. You may have seen it, I don't know. This man was a butler in the White House. So, butler's wife is once asking, when one of the presidents, so many presidents are there in that movie, his wife, one first lady is very famous for her style and beauty and everything else. So, the wife asks, hey, how many pairs of shoes she has? It turned out that she has 125 pairs of shoes. More than that, recently I learned that this uh, fellow in Philippines, what was his name, he is now running, huh? Marco. His wife had 360 pairs. Even hold this called parigra. Parigra is holding more than what we require, it's called parigraha. So one of the values of parigraha, not holding, not having more than the minimum that you require. Now if you look at our life, so much violence is there. Isn't that so? In India these days, they have these big wedding parties and there are consultants for the dishes that are cooked in the parties. Consultants charge lakhs of rupees and they have 35, 40, 50 different kinds of dishes for which there are consultants. So when you go to a wedding party in India, because people don't know where to spend money, so you will have 40 things in front of you, everything is very tempting. So what people do? Now after all the plate, keep on. Piling up that plane because you do not know if you go next time whether thing will be left or not and therefore in the first time you pile up your plate and nobody can eat these things. More than half the food is wasted. This is violence. What I am saying is these are some simple examples but if we look at our life and look at small and big things that we are doing you'll find that every moment we may be violating this order. In the olden days, United States was dumping a lot of wheat in the ocean to maintain the wheat prices. Whereas, many people in the world were going hungry. In one place, there is a wastage. Other place, there is hunger. The violence, although you not outwardly hurt anybody, but this depriving others of their right, meaning that Upanishad says that everybody has right to live, everybody has right to all the wealth which is there on this earth. Because when the earth is created, at that time there are no boundaries drawn on the earth. Who has drawn these boundaries? Human being has drawn the boundaries. This is my country. This is this country. That is your country. And therefore, whatever grows in my country belongs to me. Whatever is discovered in my country belongs to me. So I happen to live in a desert, but lots of petroleum is there. It all belongs to me. I have a fertile land. Lots of food grows here. It all belongs to me. Ideally, everything belongs to everybody. Not that it is going to happen. So there is a statement which, because people sometimes ask this question, Swamiji, you say that God has created this world. Why has He created this starvation? Why people are starving? Why people are miserable? What sort of world God has created? Our answer is that God has created this human being and given a free will to human being which he can abuse. So wherever we see any problems anywhere, any suffering anywhere, it can be traced to the abuse of human free will. Anywhere in any corner, 
any problem is there, any suffering is there, we can trace this to the abuse of human free will. Because there are places where people are overeating. There are places where people are starving. If this earth was a common property, then everything belongs to everybody. In that case, they say, there is enough for the need of man, not for the greed of man. This, our greed is a form of violence, because of which we deprive others of what is rightfully theirs. So never, if we become really sensitive, and observe our life, observe our mind, observe the various attitudes and thoughts arise in our mind, we'll find how we need to constantly keep on doing what they call course correction, you know. When they send a, uh, a rocket, then they constantly correct the course so that the rocket is on the right track. Similarly, we need to constantly correct our course so that we are on the right track. If we are unhappy, 